Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Eden Zero, Chapter 215. Uh, when we last left our heroes, the fight between Shiki and Ziggy finally came to an end. Uh, as after, you know, the match had some interesting echoes to a, a sparring match in Shiki's youth, Shiki realized that Ziggy had not been taken over again. And the whole thing was a ruse to get Shiki to take him down once and for all before he really could. Um, and... Z Shiki, through his tears, complied, um, wiping out Ziggy once and for all, though some remnant of Ziggy, I think, is kind of implied to be living within Shiki on account of the whole they're the same person from different timelines thing. Uh, but we did get confirmed that Pino survived, as I suspected, uh, though I initially thought it would be like the good Ziggy peeking through and warp pulling her away at the last second. It was actually the good Ziggy the whole time who had used warp hole to drop her off as soon as the battle was over. Uh, and yeah, that's where we left off, with just sort of Shiki feeling the weight of, of Ziggy's passing, and the sort of dying moment, dying thoughts of Ziggy. Uh, it was a real sweet little moment. So let's dive right on in, chapter 215, From the Depths of the Earth. I uh, pick up where we left off, with, with Shiki and, and Pino still gazing on the destruction, uh, and Pino looks up, Master... And Shiki doesn't respond, but Supino goes on. Did you always know that it was Master Ziggy? No. I figured it out during the fight. And then I remember that he called you Little Girl. Flashing back to Chu 13. You dare to defy me, Little Girl? That's something you would call a human girl, right? Which is, uh, that's a stretch of an argument, but it, it works for here. Uh, as, as Pino is touched at, at Ziggy's little comment. Hmm. Uh, and Shiki, Shiki comments, Grandpa's such a good guy. Is an interesting word choice there. I think kind of, of impacted by um, the fact that like Ziggy's spirit still kind of lives within Shiki, given the implication of 214. Uh, and Pino tells him, because he was originally you. Uh, yeah, I guess. That part still doesn't really feel real. But Grandpa's power has fallen into me. So now, uh, and then we cut to the Eden Zero, uh, where Sister, in her... So, you know, Sister and Herman have been, have been listening in on this whole thing. Sister is still in her, like, dominatrix get-up. Ziggy, you're leaving me too? Uh, and Herman also sort of feels that weight. You never gave up on your pride, Ziggy. Like, just Ziggy's passing, you know, even from, like, the, the chaos and mania of of Hermit's desperate search, knocks her right out of that, uh, until an emergency alert passes over her computer, uh, shocking uh, um, Hermit, and that error, the like emergency thing blares through the entire ship, uh, including the room where Couchpo, Labilia, and Mosco are, as Couchpo questions, what's all the noise about? And Labilia, an alert? And Mosco just like head in hands, Moscoy! Uh, and, uh, Jean calls over to Hermit. Hermit, what happened? Uh, and Hermit runs over to Connor. Connor, prepare for departure. She's not even in the room for, for Jean to get answers. Eh? Call everyone back to the ship. Hurry! And we cut back to the mother room, uh, where I think that's maybe Feather's ship? Uh, cause Y, y says, or I'll read Rebecca and Wise's line, uh, as Re Rebecca questions, what is that? And Wise knows I know that ship. They're with the Union Army. And given the sort of, like, angel wings, that could be wholly tying into the angels or feather with the wings. Uh, and Wise continues to curse like he's from, like, 50 years ago. Smudge and blaze is. Uh, and Rebecca calls, happy. Aye. They're all getting ready for a fight, a desperate fight. They're not really in a position to win right now. But the ship calls down, we have no intention of fighting you. Uh, and Rebecca notes, I guess from inside the ship, Homera's unconscious form. Shocking wise, Homera. Um, and it's Eraser, who is... I guess that was Eraser's ship. Okay. It feels like it'd be more fitting for Feather or Holy, or really almost anyone but Eraser, but okay. Uh, she helped our little justice out of a jam. And you know, one good turn deserves another. So we're here to return her. Not really giving them a way to, like, get out of, of Lendard, if it's such an emergency that they leave. 
Though, with Ziggy gone, there, like I sort of brought up last time, there is no need for Planet Eater, which makes the whole moral quandary around Planet Eater feel really kind of weird and, and pointless in the end, as it didn't really mean anything. Hmm. But why is just glares? Clearly not trusting Eraser. And Eraser jumps down to the ground. Oh, don't scowl. We really don't want to fight you right now. And looking around, and wow, what is this place? It's incredible. Uh, but he, he, like, just leaves Homura on the ground. Uh, Rebecca goes to her. Homura, are you okay? Uh, and Homura is barely conscious. She makes a little noise, but not much more than that. Uh, as it, it appears to have been Feather's ship, because Feather is the one piloting it. Never mind that. We should leave this planet quickly. A chronophage is on its way to Lendard. Okay. So they didn't need Planet Eater at all, which just makes the whole thing even weirder. You know, if you're going to end it on a chronophage without Rebecca's influence, what was the point? I don't know. I, I still just find Planet Eater to be a really weird plot diversion at this point, given that, like, Rebecca did not inst like. Rebecca did not end up instigating Planet Eater. Uh, though maybe, you know, I, I've been of the long-standing theory that like, the chronophage could bring in uh, Draken, the, the younger DJ zombie, thanks to, to Norma and all that. Maybe, you know, I, I sort of noted, I mean, I think everyone noted how weird it was to, like, bring in Shia as Aknoella with this tie to, to Elsie and then instantly kill her off. And, like, if the chronophage sends Lendard back, you know, around 20 years ago, that brings Shia back into play. And if she somehow finds out about what's happened to her future self, given what little we know of her, how could she react? You know, I, I, I love the chronophage as a concept. It's one of, in my opinion, one of, like, the greatest creations Mashima's ever had. It's so interesting, uh, even if I find the, the sort of moral aspects of Planet Eater to be really weird, given everything the arc has done uh, in its climax now, I'm, I'm still excited to see what sort of possibilities the Chronophage can bring to Lendard. Um, but anyway, uh, Rebecca and Wise, knowing they have not like started Planet Eater yet, are shocked to hear about the Chronophage. Uh, and Happy gets, uh, gets an incoming message on his, on his little B-cube, um, and Hermit's calling in, Rebecca, come in, Rebecca! Operation Planet Eater is cancelled. The chronophage is already headed to Lendard. Return to the ship now. Uh, and yeah, Happy's just panicked at that. Uh, which again, like, even, even Hermit brings it up. Like, Planet Eater is cancelled. There was no point to any of all of that sort of, like, worrying. Uh, and Happy turns to Rebecca. Rebecca, when did you summon the chronophage? I didn't. It changed course without us? Um, which actually, given... My theories about the true enemy being Ethereon, being that future Rebecca, maybe that's all tied together somehow? Or just the fact that, like, two versions, you know, the sort of, the time madness around Shiki and, and Ziggy. Mm. Though it has previously been stated that, like, the two, the past and future selves aren't, like, creating a paradox. You've seen that with Wise. So I don't know. It's a weird thing. Um... What, but it does feel like, like, the fact that Rebecca brings up that question, it changed course without us, makes us, makes me feel like we're supposed to be a little concerned about that. A little like, why did it change course, uh, without us? Anyway, Cro uh, Eraser comes over. I don't know what's up with you guys, but the part about the chronophage is 100% true. So, considering the circumstances, we, we don't want to fight you. Or rather, it's really not the time. Oh, and then, going by what Shiki said a while ago... Uh, about, where's the line? Grandpa's power has fallen into me, what with her whole sort of, like, soul merge thing. A wormhole appears behind Eraser. Uh, and Shiki and Pino jump in, sort of announcing the fact that, that, uh, Ziggy is dead. Guys, you guys, you got Hermit's message, right? Uh, and they're all shocked to see, to see Shiki appear like that. Shiki? And Wise is stunned. What in the? Where did you come from? And Pino tells him, a wormhole. I got a new power from Grandpa, but never mind. We have to... And he stops as he sees Eraser. Um, as Eraser... We don't, get, we don't get to see Shiki's thoughts on Eraser, whether he has any thoughts about um, Eraser's assistance during the Aoi War. But we do see Eraser's thoughts on Shiki. This is Shiki Grandbell, the man with the ether of a demon king. 
And it's really just that interesting note there. I'm not sure that that's just a typo or, or not. Shiki's name is listed there as being Grand with a D bell instead of Grand Bell without the D, how it's normally spelled. Given that we know where the name Grand Bell came from, that feels like a typo. Um, that, that's my best guess, that it is just a typo, given, given what we got of, of, of uh, Ziggy's backstory. Uh, but anyway, Shiki turns to Eraser. You guys better get out of here too. There's a chronophage coming to this planet. Yeah, we know. And Shiki goes on, now I have to find Elsie, and, and Eraser cuts him off. Don't bother with Elsie. Shocking, Shiki, which is, you know, don't bother with Elsie, not a good sign. But Eraser goes on, apparently she wants to talk to Justice alone. They fought each other for ages, and now they're finally talking. Let's not be a third wheel. All right, um, so, I mean, that that is sort of where their dynamic was headed after, after Elsie cut off, um cut off the, the Mobius system. Uh, and Shiki reacts, but... And Feather tells him, Justice has been, has been informed of the approaching chronophage. They can escape when it becomes necessary. And Shiki accepts that. Okay, then we're out of here. Come on, everybody, grab on. I'll open a wormhole to the ship. And Rebecca grabs his hand, and we get this really sweet moment. I'm glad you're okay, Shiki. And Shiki just smiles at her. Uh, and Eraser interrupts them. Mind if I ask you a question? And Shiki turns to him. What are you people after? And Shiki, now that, that the problem with Ziggy is settled, and I guess the, the whole true enemy thing is not really settled in to Ziggy, or to Shiki, uh, he just tells him, Adventure. We're going to find Mother. Which is a very Luffy answer. Like, I, I've compared the series at times to having sort of a, not a full Space One Piece vibe, but like elements of it feel kind of, you know... Fairy Tail got some crap, got, some, got I think too much crap during his run for like being a One Piece clone, which it very much isn't. Um, mm. And I don't think even Zero is a One Piece clone either, or like One Piece in space or something. But this bit here, that, you know, change Mother for One Piece, the One Piece. And that's basically, that, that's a Luffy line right there. Um, and then they warp away. Uh, leaving Feather and Eraser to discuss what just happened. Uh, as Feather questions, Shiki and his party moved instantaneously to the Eden Zero? That power belonged to Nero. Uh, and Eraser corrects her, technically, it's the power Ziggy took from- Is the power Ziggy took from- Blah, 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 blah. Power Ziggy took from Nero. So did Shiki beat Ziggy? Uh, and Feather comments, I've lost Ziggy's positional information. And judging from Shiki's position a few minutes ago, it is a certainty. And Eraser smiles. This kind of suspicious grin um, at that concept. At, at Shiki beating Ziggy. Um, and Connor calls out, Even Zero, prepare to launch. And Wise and Rebecca are back on, back on the bridge now. Wise questions, can we? Half of our engines are busted. Uh, and Connor just, just questions, Who do you think I'd be? And, you know, we get the very, the very specific shot of Rebecca right after that. Uh, yeah, who does Wise think he is? We all know. Uh, and Connor looks at her sadly and then gets back to work. All hands assist with the launch sequence. Um, and then we cut to, to Hermit and, and Shiki. As Hermit tells Shiki, I know it was hard. And Shiki turns to her. It's just as hard for you. Uh, but... Hermit, Hermit, like, you know, doesn't even really acknowledge that, that bit of sympathy. Instantly moving on. Now might not be the time to bring this up, but... The real enemy Ziggy was talking about? The one that was controlling him. Are we getting to it? Is it Ethereon? Am I right in it being Ethereon? When Ziggy left the Eden Zero 18 years ago, he said something to Elsie. He said that he couldn't, br couldn't keep a big ship at Grand Bell because it's a theme park. But then it doesn't make sense. When did he build it? Uh, when did he build what? The Eden Zero? Because we know about that. It was probably already under construction when we were in outer space. That blank period in our memories. I don't know why he would have built it. Oh. And I guess he wanted a spare ship. In case something happened to the Eden Zero. Uh, is she implying the Eden's one? Is that what we're getting here? And this part might be a jump in logic. 
but I think maybe it developed its own will. One that was in opposition to Ziggy's goals. All of this while the Eden Zero is in takeoff. I, is the Eden's one about to try to like stop him from leaving? Uh, and Shiki questions its own will. Uh, and as as they, they take off, we get this rumbling in the world. Um, as Rebecca questions high heat sources, high heat source readings up ahead. And Happy is just stunned. What is that? Something's coming out of the ground. Uh, and we see the ground start to crack as, as Hermit goes on and say, I was too advanced. It surpassed the intelligence of humans and the intelligence of machines. Uh, and Connor just screams, it was here all along? Uh, and yeah, that I think is the Eden's one looming over the Eden Zero. Mm. A ship with unparalleled power and matchless intellect. That is our real enemy. The Eden's One. A ship with a mind of its own. Uh, okay. So that's an interesting twist. That's definitely not where I was, where I thought Majima was going with any of this. And I'm not quite sure it's the right answer. I'm not sure it's like the best twist either. I'm not sure... Not to, like, heart my own theory, now that it's been once again disproved. One day, I will get an Eden Zero theory right, damn it. Um, but, like, I feel like the issue with, with that is, like, the issue with the Eden's One being this ship with a mind of its own, unless that's not correct, unless something else happened to the Eden's One, I'm not quite sure how that works, you know? Because, because... Think about, about what Hermit says in relation to what Ziggy had already told us, right? About, um, about the true enemy being the one who told him about his past. About how he never gained memories of his time 20,000 years in the future. How only the Eden's One ever told him that. But then what Hermit says here is that the Eden's One was only built while Shiki, while Ziggy and the Shining Stars were on their initial quest for Mother 18 years ago. And so I'm not quite sure that works together. Because if, if the Eden's One was being built 18 years ago, well after Ziggy loses his memories, how does Eden's One, a ship that Ziggy initially built, learn about the future? How does that track? I'm not quite sure it does. Like, the notion of a ship gaining a will of its own is not that, is not, like, that absurd. You know, given the sort of, like, like, I, I can see how that would work, tying into the, the show's sort of imagery of, of machines and AI life forms. Like, that all tracks in my brain, especially with sort of the focus that Ziggy had at the start of the Lendard arc about, like, the sort of, um... Like, the, the focus on the computational power of, of the Eden's One in Finding Mother. Like, I can see how... I, I Like, I can accept that this ship has a mind of its own and is up, and is is devoted to, to Yami Ziggy's goals in some way. Um, somehow. But, like, the idea that it is the one who told Ziggy who he was, the whole past of Ziggy, that's hard for me to believe. Because I can't quite understand how the ship knows about things in the future, in another universe's future. Because, you know, Ziggy would have built that in Universe 1, uh, and it was only in Universe 2 that he went on to become Ziggy. So that doesn't quite work either. I don't know. I'm not... Because, like, Ziggy couldn't have told us that. Even just looking into the future in Universe 1, it couldn't have learned the truth. I mean, maybe I, but like, I, I was about to say maybe, you know, only in Universe 2 did, did Ziggy revive. But we know that Eden's One existed in Universe 1 because we knew that Universe 1 Connor was captain of the Eden's One before its destruction in Universe 1. Which then calls into other questions about, about how this, you know, supreme mastermind was destroyed in Universe 1. Um, it's a bold twist. And I'm just not sure it's going to pay off. I do say, though, this shot of it rising from the ground, this last page, does look really cool. This sort of, like, evil dragon design 
It really, it's like, in terms of pure intimidation, it really works. But I'm not quite sure I buy the mechanics of the twist. Um, let's talk the rest of the chapter. Um, you know, I, I like the little moments we spend those first few pages on, on, you know, Pino and, and Shiki and Sister and Hermit reflecting on Ziggy's passing. On, you know, even, like, even though they believe Ziggy to be the enemy, the fact that he's truly gone and there was that good side of him even to the end drives home once again how, you know, all the people from that original journey 18 years ago are leaving. You know, um, Valkyrie long dead, uh, which saved the crew at 66, uh, Ziggy now dead on Lendard, um, it, you know, it's not, nothing, none of these moments have quite hit, like, the, the, the witch sister cry session at the end of Sun Jewel, but also they don't really have time to really feel all this right now with a chronophage on the way. Which, as I said earlier, just brings to mind, like, what was the point of Planet Eater, given that nothing actually ended up coming of it? Like, it, it continues to feel one of, like, one of the weirder decisions Mashima has gone with, ever. Like, I don't know, it doesn't feel like there was any point, not even in a sort of, of, I don't know, like, like there are some decisions that are like, okay, he's kind of written himself into a corner, I see why he might go for a more, for, for a, a plot line I'm not really big on. Um, but Planet Eater just felt like it was, like, now that Planet Eater comes to nothing and the chronophage is here anyway, what was the point of all of the, the, the sort of, you know, grief and, and angst Rebecca was feeling all through Lendard? Um, though, that line from Rebecca on page nine I pointed out earlier, it changed course without us, does sort of call to mind there might be something going on, perhaps tied to... Um, the thing that, that Noah told Rebecca ages ago about another Leaper user, which would make a lot more sense if it was Ethereon alive in, in Code 3173. Um, but no, apparently that's not what's going on, so, I don't know. I really don't know. Like, the Eden's one twist, not, not to harp back on that again, but it's so out of left field. It is so weird. I, I'm looking forward to see how Mashima makes it work. Uh, but it's gonna be a stretch. <laughs> like, it's a weird fucking twist. As cool as that final image of the ship is, to make a ship with a mind of its own the main villain, it's, it's weird, right? Like, I don't know. I, if I think, like, a mastermind sort of twist, I want someone who, like, has motivations and has a history and is not just sort of evil because, I guess. Uh, like, with Ziggy, had they had Mashima chosen to go this route, he could have pointed out the sort of historic bigotry against bots to sort of fuel his, his bigotry against humans. All of that makes sense to me. Uh, but I don't know that the ship would really feel that way. Uh, though maybe, maybe Mashima will go something, some, maybe Mashima will go with something similar to that with, with the ship. I don't know. It still is weird. Um, and like, you know, Hermit points out there are still a number of questions. Why did Ziggy do this? Even with Ziggy gone, the sort of mysteries of Ziggy are, are still kind of central to the series, especially with the Eden's One being a ship in, of such mystery. Um, but yeah, the only other thing to talk about is the, the bit with, um, the gang talking to Eraser. Uh, it's a sweet bit, a sort of acknowledging the, the kind of, of truce we're all in right now. Um, and then that very sort of, of Luffy-esque adventure we're going to find Mother as Eraser, you know, because I think Eraser, even knowing that Kyora has been, like, manipulating the Galactica for so long, still assumes that the Galactica, like, want things. <laughs> uh, and Shiki very much doesn't. He just sort of wants to live his life. Same with Elsie, uh, because the Galactica was always sort of a inherently sort of suspect system. Um... And then there is still that weird little smile from Eraser upon learning that, that Shiki killed Ziggy that just looks a little suspicious to me. I don't know. Uh, it's the kind of twist that is just, I'm, I'm still trying to process, like, not to go, not to go, not to suddenly jump back to the Eden's One thing, but it's such a sudden twist. It is such a weird choice that I still don't really know what to do with it. Uh, and it sort of is, is overlaying all of my thoughts in this chapter. Um, like, I could talk about the rest of it. I could talk about, 
uh, Suspicious Eraser. I could talk about the Chronophage and how that might tie into the other uh, Leaper user. Noah talked about like a year or so ago now. But the the true enemy is a giant ship. I don't know if I can know what we're doing with that. Um, like, I don't know. Maybe I could tie the Eden's one to, like, Acnologia in terms of, like, narrative roles. But Acnologia, like, had a human side. You know, had motivations as, as weird as they were in the little, like, anime-only stuff. Um, I don't know. It's a weird thing. After, after the sort of, like, emotional highlights of last week, it's just weird for all of a sudden. It's like, the real enemy is a boat. Uh, okay, sure. Let's see where we're going with that, Mashima. Um, and yeah, we'll have to wait and see what comes next. So with that said, I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes it happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye!